Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to talk about an approach to uh, cartoonizing a photograph. So for this video it's going to be more like a commentary and thank you to Lori for supplying the photograph. We're going to be taking this picture of this cute little pig and converting it into this cartoon. Now the approach is going to use techniques that I've explained in other videos, the first being how to draw with vector graphics and you know massage the shapes to be exactly the way that you want them to be, and the second is digital painting. So essentially taking those shapes and then using selections to be able to restrict the region where we want to paint. So being that it's a commentary, I'm going to explain what I'm doing and there'll be points where the video will probably speed up for pacing, um, but it's really just an explanation, not quite a tutorial. So let's get into it. So to start off, we have the picture of the pig and the first thing that I'm going to do is use the vector objects presets and just draw an oval. And as shown before in other tutorials, to manipulate that shape using the nodes, you have to first right click on that object and say convert to path and then use the pen tool to, you know, manipulate the nodes and adjust the handles or adjust their position. And then you can always do control click along that line to add more nodes as necessary. What you'll notice is I switch between um, either different levels of opacity of the layer or just turn off the visibility so that I can see the shape of the vector graphic in relation to the object behind it. As well, in terms of choosing the color of what the shape is going to be, I can use the color pick tool on the background image to essentially ensure that the color at least is relatively close to what the image is in the back. At a certain point, you know, I'll start to use my own creative judgment on what colors I want to use, but just to get started with, that's one way you can do it. So continuing on, just using that same technique, but recognizing that um, it's important to separate vector objects on different layers. And this is primarily because it allows you to much more easily move things in front of or behind them. So now moving on, um, using the pen tool exclusively, so not starting with a vector graphic, and then just drawing lines that kind of match up with that fence, that upper fence there. In hindsight, I figure it probably would have been easier to actually just draw a rectangle. Um, and then use the sheer manipulation on the points to get the shape that is ultimately what I have. Then doing the same once again for the fence on the bottom. Now in this case, I created two rectangular regions primarily because uh, there's two different colors. There's sort of the top of that fence, which is one color, and then the side, which is another color. So that's the primary reason to draw two different shapes for that specific area. So now I've moved the snout and the nostrils above that front fence post because in the photograph, the nose kind of hangs over it a little bit. So this is another example of how having them on separate layers gives you that flexibility that I mentioned earlier. Now beginning to draw the shapes that are going to represent the pig's body and head. Note that I don't pay too much attention with trying to get it to look like anything. It's really just a matter of overlapping the spaces that are going to be that color. Next, adding the eye. And one thing that's special about this particular shape is that I change uh, some of the node types to cusp. And what this does is it allows you to manipulate the handles independently, the left and right or top and bottom handles independently. And thus you can get more sharp corners like is necessary for the bottom parts of the eyes there. Next, adding another layer and just starting to uh, fill in, you know, the ear sections. And at this point, I kind of decided, and this was just a choice, that the rectangle that I used for the back portion of the body I didn't really like and I wanted it to have just a little bit more curvature to it so I redrew that section with an oval to replace it. So now once again creating a new layer for the very background fence area and 
Since it's really not that important of a segment of the image, it's really all about the pig. Um, I didn't put too much effort into trying to um, replicate the angles and the perspective of them. I just created some slats to kind of represent that sort of wood effect. And one quick tip about, you know, using the same object over and over again on the same vector layer, you can just hit Control C to copy and Control G to paste a vector object as a duplicate item. And then just creating a final raster layer in the back and then making it dark just to just to get that sort of darkness in between the slats. And so now we're kind of at that stage where we have the general shape. There's no shading, no painting or anything. All of this was just created with vector graphics, um, either modified um, ellipses or just, you know, straight edge rectangles. So now we're going to move into the um, segment where we begin painting. And this is just using the standard approach of using one of the vector graphics in the magic wand, for example, to create a selection, maintaining that selection and creating a new raster layer, and then using the paintbrush to paint around that selection and maybe have a low hardness to get that nice sort of blended look. But recognizing that the selection helps to keep your painting within that region, so you don't have to worry about staying within the lines. So we'll speed this segment up um, and just kind of get through all the painting so you can see how it's done. It's the same approach, just applied at different layers all over the pig. And then what you'll see is at a certain point, you know, I, I use some um, artistic freedom. You know, I move and resize the nostrils a little bit and I make the eye bigger. And this is just, um, you know, using your creativity. So now having allowed the time lapse to kind of run through with the painting, uh, this is the final result. And as you can see, it, de it definitely looks very cartoony. There's definitely lots of detail and fine elements that didn't get carried over from the original image, but that's the goal. The, and, and, and recognizing that to create this effect, there isn't just a single one button click or one button effect to do it. It definitely takes some effort, but um, it does give you that level of creativity and control if you're really trying to have it look like a cartoon just like this. One final note about the image is that um, I think it would be difficult to try to create a cartoon like this where you didn't have any shadows, primarily because of the, the way you were looking at the subject. That if this were like an image of a pig in a profile, you know, like you're just seeing the silhouette, for example, of its shape, you could recognize it as a pig and it would be fine. But in this case, since it's a much more abstract view of a pig where it's like just the nose and the face and parts of the body that it really requires that next level of fidelity of the shadowing to, even as a cartoon, still convince you that that's what it is. So a lot of it really is going to depend on what your image is and what type of look you're trying to achieve. So once again, there'll be links in the description for other videos that more in depth teach on the techniques that were used here. But this was just meant to show you an example of using those two types of techniques to turn a photograph into a cartoon. So that's it for me. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions of content, feel free to leave a comment. And if you want to be notified of updates, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.